So let's talk a little bit about predicting your future results. Um, you know, how can we understand how we're going to be doing based on how we've done in the past? Um, with a high variance format, you start running into issues where you know, your actual results, even over pretty big samples, will be terrible predictors of future outcomes. I mean, to give you the, sort of the perfect example, if you do hit you know, your, your $90,000 uh, prize pool and, and you win it, um, you'll suddenly have a massive ROI, right? I mean, your, your ROI will be very, very big. Um, you'll see the hourly on that day and it'll be, you know, huge. Um, and that doesn't mean you're going to be winning, you know, at that ROI the rest of the time you're playing spin and goes, you know, that was a, a short term uh, variance. So, um, so being able to predict your future outcome using your current results is, is really important. So there's a couple ways to, to, to deal with this and um, to make the best sort of estimator you can based on your previous results. So the first one is to focus on in the money. Um, when you use in the money to compute your R adjusted ROI, and, and I'll show you how to do that on the next slide, um, it'll remove the prize pool variance. Essentially, you know, when you just look at how often you're cashing in the games, um, you can sort of get an idea of how often you sort of expect to cash in future games. And that'll give you an idea of what you know, your sort of effective ROI would be if there was no prize pool variance. And so that's how you can remove that element of prize pool variance from your results, is by using in the money and not your actual ROI. Um, I also strongly recommend not using any of the overlay net adjusted or all in equity um, in dollars uh, that, um, for instance, PT4 provides. Um, it, it's not going to be accurate. Um, and, and, it's, and again, it's, it's going to suffer from this prize pools variant. Um, we'll look at how we can use all in equity in a second. So the way we can use tracking software to help us is we can use it to compute an all in adjusted in the money. Again, that's the key, computing a good in the money. And by using all in equity adjusted chips, you'll be able to remove some of the variants caused in these games, specifically variants caused by all ins with cards to come. And so, um, wait a second. Um, and so this is something that sometimes people get um, a little confused with how those all in equity adjusted uh, tracking works. Um, it's really simple. Essentially, whenever you have a hand that ended up with you being all in with some cards to come, whether it's three way or, or heads up or whatever, you're all in, you can't do anything else. Um, and all the, your results depend only on, you know, the random outcome of the, the future cards. Um, in those cases, and only in those cases, your tracking software, rather than giving you the outcome of that event, will give you your expectation value. That is sort of the average outcome if you had done that specific, you know, act, that, that specific all in, you know, an infinite number of times and got the average and sort of summed them all up, divided by the number of times you did it and got an average. And so in all those places it, where you had, you all in with cards to come, um, it will just give you that average rather than the outcome. And that's it. All the other hands are exactly the same. If you, you know, win a hand without showdown, you'll still have won that. It won't affect all in equity at all. It'll still be counted, but it won't change all in equity. And of course, you know, this also means it still has variance in it. I mean, it's not going to remove everything. It's not going to adjust for the fact that, you know, obviously it's unlucky when you have pocket kings and your opponent has pocket aces and you're all in. Um, it's still going to give you a negative result for that. Um, or if you're, um, you know, you bet really big on the flop, really big on the turn, and really big on the river with your set. Um, but it turns out that your opponent um, had a gut shot draw, and he uh, called the big bet on the flop, called the big bet on the turn, and um, somehow got there on the river. You know, that also isn't going to be affected, unless you are all in um, on an earlier street. If you get it all in versus your opponent on the flop, for instance, then it'll give you, again, your average expectation. But if you're just, you know, playing poker down to the river, um, it's not going to change anything. Um, and so, you know, you'll just have to let the variance from those kind of actions even itself out a little bit. But at least you can remove this one element of all ends. And it is a great indicator. It's um, not biased. There's no way that, you know, your play can influence how much above or below, whether you're above or below EV. 
Um, your play can sometimes affect uh, your sort of possible, like your, your standard deviation of being below or uh, above. So it can sometimes affect like the magnitude of possibly being above or below. Perfect example is if you open shove every single hand, you'll likely have, you know, be able to get be more over EV or, or more under EV. You'll be both. But again, it, you know, you're just as likely to be over EV as under EV. You're just as likely to be, you know, n by, you know, thousand binds over EV as you are to be a thousand binds under EV in all inequity. And so, in that sense, it's not biased. Uh, and so, you can rely on it for your results. Um, and it, it will make your, your results strictly better. Um, it'll make it a strictly better predictor of future results. Um, and you know, that's what we're talking. So, um, so the trick to, that I'm going to be showing you to get the most out of this, um, to predict your future results the best, is to use both methods together. And that'll give you the best accurate, you know, the best estimate of, of your future ROI that's available right now. Uh, maybe in some day, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll come up with, with new ingenious ways of removing some elements of variance in poker. Uh, but for now, um, using these two methods will get you the best uh, predictor of your future ROI as you can get. It'll still be susceptible to variance. Again, you know, you'll still have that issue of, uh, for instance, you'll still have a little bit of prize pool variance um, because uh, it won't, you know, you're in the money, doesn't care about which prize pool you're in. Um, and, and especially if you're sort of doing some of that win rate maximization versus hourly maximization stuff, um, you know, that can sometimes change your in the money, your average in the money as well. So it's, it's not going to be able to do deal with things like that. And again, it's not going to be able to deal with the fact that, you know, you got kings last three hands in a row, but every time your opponent has aces, you know, that, that kind of stuff, you'll just have to wait for the time where you have aces three times in a row and your opponent has kings. <laughs> but, um, but at least you can get closer. And so, again, it's still subject to variance and, and it's still subject to sample size. I mean, the more sample you get, the better um, for, and, 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 you know, the quicker you'll get a better estimate of your future ROI. But using this method will um, sort of make the most of small samples. Um, you'll get the most information from small samples by removing these two elements of variance. And so it is strictly better um, for, for purposes of predicting your future results.